Was that the full countdown? That was it. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, Andy edition of the Midtown Bucket. It's uh, Clayton again with Andy. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can finish up this bag today with you guys. Where did we leave off last time, Andy? Uh, we got the uh, main part of the bag together. Uh, I think we need to start on the zipper gusset and then the strap. All right, so that's not too bad. Last time, let's see, we have pulled these instructions because we're trying to follow the instructions best we can. It's not always how we do things because, you know, we just try to get done everything as fast as we can sometimes. But we left off on step 15, I believe, where we glued the gussets onto the main body of the bag and sewed around it. So you are correct. We're on step 16, which is assembling the zipper and the zipper gusset. So we've got some narrow black uh, nylon zipper tape here. Item number, Tony, any second here? It's in the description. Okay. And then uh, I already installed a narrow zipper tab on your zipper tape. And so the first instruction here, sew a leather tab onto the end of the zipper that is, that is to the back side of the zipper pull. Once sewn, measure three inches from the end and make a small mark on both sides of the zipper. Does that sound familiar, Andy? Vaguely. Vaguely. Okay, so basically we're just sewing a tab on the end of the zipper tape to the back side of the zipper pole. Oh. And then how long is our <clears throat> our zipper tape here? I remember it's roughly... I'll put that down there. 15 inches. All right, and so why are we sewing a tab onto the end of it? Uh, two different reasons. So it's easier to grab a hold of, and then the other reason is to keep your zipper from falling off. Okay, that makes sense. Nice. Rose is not having it in here. All the dogs hate it in here. Well, she just saw Holly oh. out there. Yeah. Andy brought Rose today. She's the first golden retriever I've seen come through here. All right. You got some leather set aside to make your tabs? Um, yes, somewhere. I think it might have gotten tossed yesterday. <clears throat> should oh, have. Should have some extra on that piece, huh? Perfect. All right. Okay. <laughs> Make your presence known, Rose. So go ahead and cut your tab. Um, so it looks like do we have a pattern piece for the tab. There is not a pattern piece for the tab. Okay, well it is simply a rectangle, uh, about one inch long. I do. I cut it two inches, fold it over in half, so be about cover one inch of the zipper. Anybody do any good projects right now? We started a thing in the shop where we give uh, we give five employees a week a random piece of leather. They get to pick out of a box. Some of us get to pick. Some of us just get pieces handed to us, right? And so five employees get a piece of leather, and they have one week to do whatever they want with it. You know, it's just to encourage a little bit of creativity, get them to learn some new skills, get uh, some training on some different machines, maybe. But I, I got my name drawn this week, and I got a piece of rawhide. I have not decided or figured out what I'm going to do with a piece of rawhide yet. Andy got rawhide last week, and you did a tooling mall? I attempted to make a tooling mall. Right, a rawhide stack tooling mall. How'd that work out? Um, <clears throat> I let my rawhide soak 
about five minutes too long, and my circles turned into ovals. So if any of you guys got good suggestions on what I can do with a piece of rawhide, let me know. Drop a comment. I'm sure Tony will let me know some good ideas you guys have. Please. I've never actually worked with rawhide much. Outside of making dog chew toys. Guess what the amazing JB said? He said a dog chew toy. Dang, man. Yeah, see? That's like the, the go-to. Make a chew toy. A lot of people make like lampshades. Uh, Let's see if I can zoom this camera out a little bit. Seems really far away. Hmm. You got any big plans for this weekend? Wing of Palooza's this weekend. Is it? <laughs> it is. Tomorrow. Do you have to buy tickets? Yeah. I think they're like 20 bucks. I mean, all you can eat wing and beer, right? Right. So. Yeah, that ain't a bad deal. I'm sure if you're there long enough, you can find something to do with rawhide. Maybe you can make a rawhide uh, beer koozie. Ew. <laughs> like get all soft and slimy after No, line it with neoprene. Okay. All right. Yeah, maybe so. Okay, do I sell these first? Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead and stitch around them. Um, this will secure your zipper tab on there. And then you're going to mark, once you're done with that, we'll mark three inches in from the in each end of the zipper. You said you guys were matching the other day. Matching again? Yeah, you're, you're... We both have polo shirts. Dang it, Andy. It's all my fault. Yeah, we both followed along with the text message that was sent out, I guess. It's, <laughs> it's casual Friday, okay? Casual Friday with a button up shirt. I mean, I got swooshy pants on and a uh, quarter zip jacket. Yeah, you're always dressed like a PE coach. Well, somebody did comment one time that our website, looks, our website looks like it was put together by a PE coach, so I just try to look the part. Hey, close. You're not fire. Yeah. So that's definitely a step above. Uh, Abigail says, casual rodeo ready. Casual rodeo ready. Yeah. I wore my, yeah, I wore my cowboy boots all week, except for... Monday and today. Oh, that's true. Capped yeah. off the Get end. Get some blue jeans on. Okay. You're right. You're not always in PE uniform. <laughs> Michael says he's teaching 12-year-old uh, leather work. He and I are working on a modified Alice purse for his girlfriend, which I think is an old tan. The Alice was an old tan. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That'd be a great gift. I don't know if I can make one out of rawhide, though. What else most people do with rawhide? Make drum heads, right? You can make a lampshade. We sell some rawhide horn wraps. That's what John makes. Yeah, mentioned lampshade. Little sconces, wall sconces. Nice, nice sconce. I'm just trying to throw out different words. Yeah. Let's see what Jeeves comes up with. I'm gonna ask Jeeves. Is that still a thing? No. Well, it's just ask. It's just ask now. Oh, ask.com. Yeah, you can ask anybody. They got rid of. They fired Jeeves. <laughs> ask inspired by Jeeves. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I might resurrect an old project that I did. It's pretty simple. Um, I actually took a, an inline spinner bait for fishing, and I made oh. a, I made a rawhide skirt for it, and soaked it in uh, in like blood. Yeah. To give Not it a good your scent. Own. Your own. Well, yeah, it'll work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but no, soak it in some blood off a steak or something. Yeah. Or I even did. Yeah, I even soaked strips of it in rawhide and put it on a circle hook, to catch catfish. Didn't actually commit to that, but I, I have caught fish on a rawhide lure before. 
So maybe I'll just do that again. You can do some braiding for like a, like a key ring. Do some braiding. Rawhide. Rawhide knot. Key Rawhide ring. knot. Knot. Yeah. Good. Or bracelets. Good. A rawhide bracelet? I'm gonna scratch your skin. It probably hurts. Well, maybe you should lotion it up. <laughs> maybe you should finish tanning it. <laughs> Make it less raw and less tidy. Make a rawhide knife sheath, yeah. Mm-hmm. Come here, Rose. Come here. Can you get here? Say hi, Rose. <laughs> What's he doing? Uh, was there a reason that you're not back stitching on your tab there? <clears throat> Well, I went back over my first few stitches this direction. Yeah, can you go which, over a little bit? I went back over my first few stitches here, which creates a back stitch. Yeah. Just all the way around and then stitching back over it. Yep. Did your chin itch there, Rose? She's rubbing her chin around on the ground. Mm hmm. Yeah, I know, that's the outside. I get the one dog that's allergic to everything. <laughs> Allergic to grass, isn't she? Yep. <laughs> Breaks out in hives. That's, that's a tough deal. Hurts of getting a pure breed. Yeah. She's beautiful, though. Michael right. said, make a stink bait. Make a stink bait. Yeah, <clears throat> dude, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some fishing lures this weekend. All right, what's the next step? I can't believe you didn't come up with that, Andy. Some stink bait? Yeah, fishing lures, man. Uh, three inches in, measure three inches in and make a mark from each side. Um, on this? On your zipper tape. And that's basically going to mark where the ends uh, the ends of the zipper gusset are going to meet up. From both ends? Yep. Make a gauntlet with your rawhide. A gauntlet? Yeah, like four knives. Could make like a chest plate. I don't know how big a piece you got. Well, I can always get more. <laughs> or get a smaller chest. Or a smaller <laughs> chest. Like a child's armor piece. Now you're going to measure an inch and a half in from each side of your zipper gusset and mark along the, the flat side or the straight side. Joshua said that his dog is allergic to behaving. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's no dog that likes this room. No, uh, Holly, your dog does. Yeah, Rose. All right. So I guess in the instructions it actually says to mark on the finished side of that piece, but you'll be able to line it up probably. So now we're going to place a quarter piece of quarter inch basting tape uh, between these two on the finished side, and this is where we're going to actually stitch our zipper tape on. So you might have to transfer that mark to the finished side. That's my bad. Can you work to your right just a little bit more? I've never been a, a guide like this before. Huh? So I've never been a guide, a crafting guide a quite crafting like this. Guide? Well, you have, have to add it to the resume. Not with like trying to follow instructions. Usually I'm able to just make it up as I go. <laughs> Somebody said, um, like a, a sleeve for an archer. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. My wife, um... Shoots arrows at you? She does. Yeah. Yeah, she's got a compound bow. She there's, might appreciate one of those. There's a crossbow back in our workshop. That's what I heard. That, uh, that might need to go home with somebody this weekend. All right. So now, yeah, you've got your marks on your zipper tape, you've got your marks and your basting tape on the zipper gusset pieces, and so we're going to lay these down. Remember how, how that goes on there? So it's from the finish side, and I believe you're going to lay it down. This one's going to go on this side, and you'll stitch, and then you'll open that up, and this one will go on this side. Okay. Make sense? Yep. 
What'd you find? Uh, she just licking something. She just licking like. Just licking the mat. Yeah, uh, she's chewing on something. Come here. She's good. Good at that. What'd you get? Come here, Rose. <laughs> Y'all fight. Clayton's all the time. I don't know how deep talk. that is in there, but. Well, she done ate it. I got a question from you for you from there from yeah. Andrea. Andrea T. Question, Andy. Has anyone at SLC made a hip belt for tools? If not, maybe Clayton can design one. We do. We've actually got one hip belt pouch uh, kit out for sale yeah. currently. And then uh, Andy had made a prototype the other day for a gardening tool pouch, uh, which that one turned out pretty well. Um, and we might look at developing that one into a kit. So yeah, Andrea, take a look at that on our website, see if it's something you'd be interested in. I have another hip pouch that I was showing Andy the other day that was out of like a wax canvas and leather. Yeah. That's pretty pretty snazzy. You know, I love wax canvas and leather combination. It's not my favorite to work with. It's a little bit more challenging for me to work with wax canvas, but it does, it looks really cool. Uh, a jelly gato, jelly cat. So the bad idea would be rawhide confetti. Ooh, yeah, especially if it's coming out of a cannon. Look up above you. I still have confetti when you guys confetti bomb Liz. Yeah, the... <laughs> stuck to the sound panels up there. That was pretty good. Ooh, a skull from rawhide. I thought about that. Yeah. Was that how Aaron I the form main it? One? Huh? Aaron on re retail, did he make a skull? Uh, I don't think it was out of rawhide. But... I don't think it was out of rawhide, but yeah, I think he did. Yeah. I found a pattern not too long ago online for doing a skull like candle holder, which was kind of neat. Yeah, I thought about doing a rawhide skull. I'd have to find like a wooden head for him, I guess. I guess you, I could use like a doll head. Okay. Angel says, I have a stingray that's rawhide. Super cool, but I haven't found a clue. I have no clue what to use it on. A rawhide stingray? Is that what you just said? Yeah. yeah. No idea, man. Stingray is tough enough as it is. Let me get you he a raw one. Hand sew the zipper on there. Hand sew? Yeah. Someone's looking to spend some time with us. Um, I guess I could switch back to the table. I was busy reading. Uh, uh, Darcy asked, does the wax canvas gum up the sewing machine? Um, no, the Martexan that we sell is actually pretty good quality wax canvas. What do you got, Rose? It's pretty good quality wax canvas. Um, so I haven't had any issues running it through the sewing machine. The wax is, is pretty well embedded in the canvas fibers. Um, I have seen some wax canvases before that actually shed quite a bit of wax, and that, that could maybe cause you some issues. Typically, you run into trouble with adhesives. All right, got that stuck on there. Dean says, I don't think they hand sew, or uh, Lil Filler says, I don't think they will hand sew anything on this video. It takes too long. Yeah. Diz, uh, Diz. Liz did some on a knife sheet. Yeah. The knife sheet stuff. She hand sews all of her knife sheets. Yeah. And she makes some really nice ones. She can get particular about the way her back stitch, or bottom stitch looks. Hey, Sean. John Keenan on, on YouTube. He's watched watched on his quest on Facebook before. Yeah. Nice. Say on his quest. Mm -hmm. Oculus Quest too. Oh. VR yeah. headset. You know the VR yep. headset that I brought in. Before? I remember now. I'm one of those. Yeah, nice. Yeah, why don't we get set up for that, Tony? Get us a room set up. Just set up a boxing ring in here and, yeah. and stream that. People yeah. can walk around in our live videos on their Oculus. <laughs> I have a I have a carrier format. Rose, what are you eating now? 
It's the same, it's the same thing. thing. So just chewing on her tongue. Come here, Rose. You say hi again. Say hi. There you go. There you go. Maybe Andy can fish it out. Oh my god, what is that? Leather rounder. <laughs> oh, that's the one you dropped. <laughs> Oh, that was the round to it? Yep. Man, she got around to it. She yeah, did. she did. She didn't get around to it. She made, made sure to keep the floor clean. Yeah. Yeah, I see you. All right. What is the next step? All right. So next we're going to be attach uh, the ends of our, our gusset together. Uh, so those two ends right there, and we're going to stitch those. So I'd, I'd probably stick them with a piece of maybe quarter-inch basing tape, unless you think you can hold it. Uh, so one end of the zipper will have a leather tab sewn to it, the other end will be loose. Remember that you're having to mark inch and a half in for both the So you guess it to the zipper between the two marks. All right, we're past that. Yeah, so you just sew both ends of the, zip, the gusset together. And then we're going to be ready to be gluing it onto the bag. That you can't find the tip belt for tools. The tip belt? Hit the hip belt for tools. I think it's called hip pouch. Hip pouch. Or tool. Let me find, let me find a link for tool it. Tool pouch, yeah. Help her out. I'm looking. If you're turning the bag, you probably want to open the zipper a little. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, we it'll be kind of hard. Yep. Yeah. You can it's still grab close. it from here. It's open. This is how it goes in the bag. Um, Angela was talking about <clears throat> we had some of our rhino thread for $4 a spool for hand sewing on our that's pretty I good think deal. Closeouts or I'm not sure what it's Close out colors. Steals and deals. It's yeah. close out. But we were discontinuing some colors because some of the yellows were very close to the same. Yeah. So we'll just carry one instead of all of them. That's a really good deal for the rhino thread. That's some great hand stitching thread. It's just a, a waxed hand thread. We like did a comparison between it and the tiger thread. Tiger thread's a little bit more, um, it has more strands, I think, in it than yeah. the rhino thread does. But it's also uh, quite a bit more expensive than $4 or even the $6 or whatever we normally charge a roll for. It is. It's quite a bit. I don't remember how much it costs, but it was quite a bit. And for the, I mean, I don't know how strong you need your hand stitching thread to be, but the rhino thread, you can't break it, you know. You can try. What is the availability of the... Cobra class 26, would you get out of my trash can? EPS machine. Do you want to talk about the EPS machine itself? Maybe the motor, what, what's the benefit of it? So the EPS machine, we've ran it on a, a class four before. And honestly, the benefit, it would come in handy if you're doing uh, large production runs. You're sewing the same thing time after time and where it, because it repositions your needle right right where you set it, right? Um, for what we do here, uh, since we do a pretty wide variety of products and we're constantly changing what we're sewing, uh, the EPS just doesn't really make sense for us to run. If you have experience running a sewing machine already without one, honestly, you're, you might not like it. I, I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, we ran one on our class four for a few weeks and I just took it back off because honestly, I felt like it, it kind of held me back um, I've got a lot of experience on those heavy stitching machines and honestly, I'm, I'm usually able to place the needle where I want it with my foot, you know, just using the pedal anyway. The availability of them, uh, I don't think that we have any in stock and Mother Machine Company had been them. up, um, keeping up with the sales. I'm yeah. not sure where they're at right now. Our main sewing machine person is in Las Vegas. Yeah, Liz usually has a handle on that. All right, so at this point, 
We've got our zipper gusset assembled. The ends are sewn together. The zipper sewn in. We're going to place a quarter inch of uh, glue, a quarter um, in from the top edge around both the inside of the bag and then the outside of the zipper gusset. So we're just going to want to make sure and line up the center mark of the zip zipper gusset with the center mark on the panels of the bag and stick these pieces together. And if all goes well, it should line up and shouldn't have too much slack all the way around the top. the table. I don't know what you guys got under there, but... Leather. So it looks like we've got 12 on order. Six are back ordered. So we may have six to sell they, when they get here, if they get here. Are you flipping the bag and putting the seam inside? I am not flipping the bag. This goes on the inside like this and opens up and then we have a oh french roll edge yep let's see i gotta get caught youtube is going crazy today well feed us some comments man uh, Lil Fear says he was looking at the class 26 and in what's included it says one ugly leather bundle. What do you mean by ugly leather? Well, he's got a pretty wide definition of ugly leather, I would say. So, this is really a good question for Kevin or Corey who make our bundles. But a lot of it's going to be thinner weight leather, just kind of, we, we order it in odd lots, right? So we can't say for sure what's going to be in any given bundle. But a lot of it's going to be thinner weight, so ranging from two to three, three to four, maybe some four to five. And it's just going to be, it could be a print, could be a weird color of upholstery leather, could be kind of an odd oil tan. I mean, they put all kinds of stuff in those bundles. Jordan Jones says the ugly leather is not ugly. <laughs> just kind of 50 feet of random stuff some of it might be weird but did you do a video for that yet i have not I haven't done a video for the ugly leather bundle well i mean we opened one on a live shopping deal but that's not i mean a lot of it's not really that ugly it's just odd lot stuff you know we might have a few of one certain side or or pattern and uh and just throw it in there you know yeah um it says that most of it is finished slips uh, which is not a bad thing when it's stiff um, usually around four to five to six hours okay so even a little bit heavier than i thought a lot of those finished splits can be pretty nice before we had made two little bundles yesterday for us Clayton. yeah that would go perfect to make one of these bags. Yeah. 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 You guys are quiet over there. You're not doing anything? I'm Just concentrating. Oh. <laughs> 
This is not quite the chatterbox that Liz normally is. Two foot square pieces. Look at those little What? Things. Yeah. Here, move your glue. That's over. a bundle we're going to start selling? Nope. They thought they just had s some of it and they were going to make it into stuff like a bundle like this, but she made two and then she said, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so she never mind. I was going to say, what? Are, are we really going to pre cut these pieces for bundles? Well, but your, shop's, your shop's being caught up, so we're. Yeah, the thing about these. Uh, these Two foot by two foot pieces, this is bigger than our, our cutting boards on our clicker presses. You know, we've got a cutting capacity of about 18 by 38 because our boards are, are about 19 and a half by 39 and a half. And so these two by twos are cut by hand. We've got a large acrylic template that we're able to set down and, and cut around real quick. But man, it is still pretty laborious. So I can't imagine having to do a bunch of these for bundles. So Mark is from Germany, so he hasn't gotten uh, Ugly Bundle, but he says, from what I've seen on the Facebook groups, it's only called Ugly to sneak some nice leather without Kevin noticing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Well, and yeah, I mean, if we do have some really ugly leather, we're not going to just send you a full bundle of just nasty looking stuff. You, have a you might get some weird looking stuff every once in a while, but yeah, we're definitely going to put in some, some attractive pieces that are very usable. Does, uh, Come here, Rose. You want to look at this? Does Rose have a leash to go potty? Sound like she needs. Uh, she went right before we left. Look at that. Okay. Look at that leather. She's being noisy about it. I know. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, she's very vocal. I like the piece of gray they put in here. All right. All right. Uh, here, let me switch that. Like a piece oh, of gray on. Venetian. You want to look through that? Here. Yeah, that's pretty nice. There is a lot of good pieces in here that would that would uh, coordinate pretty well to do one of these bags. That's a nice piece of leather. Like that kind of burnt orange look. And it does. It looks just like our, our Venetian yeah. upholstery, those first few pieces there, which is really pretty nice stuff. That's what this is. You know, the bag's being made out of, and it's like, what, six bucks a foot? Yeah, something like that. That's kind of a cool piece that would make a nice fashion bag. I don't, I'm trying to remember. We may have sold it for like 40 bucks on the live shop, and we had two of them yesterday. So you get like a pretty good mixture of textures. Yeah. Pretty nice mixture of finishes, both matte and and uh, glossy. But those are sold, so you, met, you missed out. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's always back good to, to look back. What's the next step? What's the next step, Andy? Well, we just talked about that French rolled edge. So next step is going to be taking your piece. It, instructions call for a piece that's inch and a half wide, 35 inches long. Measure a half inch in on one end and make a mark across the strip. Thin this half inch area with a sharp knife or razor blade. Be careful not to cut all the way through the leather. And place glue on the half inch thinned area. Fold over and stick down. So basically you're doing a rolled edge all the way down this 35 inch strip, yeah? And yes. Is this going to serve as the interior edge once it's folded over? That's my guess. Uh, I'll have to reference how I did this one. It will be this edge right here. All right. Now place glue an eighth inch in from the edge of this, uh, from one edge, of, in from one edge of side, side the length of the strip on the face side of the leather. So on the finished side, and so we're going to be gluing these two leathers together, uh, grain side to grain side. It's going to be one edge of this strip ar around the top edge of this bag. Man, these are these instructions were definitely done a while ago. Like I said, I think this pattern was made <laughs> eight years ago. I'm gonna redo that one. I know it's good that we're getting the video instructions done, though. When people have something something else to reference besides just the written ones, I mean they're they're coherent, you know, and you can you can follow along and successfully make the bag. They're just a little bit more than what what's needed.
Kevin likes to use a lot of words sometimes. Yeah. I don't think this was Kevin. That's okay, he can take the blame, he's not in here. Hey Rose. Kevin's probably over rolling some oil tan leather. Oh, definitely. I saw him over there in that cold coffee shop, dark den earlier, rolling up leather. Yeah. Just poke my head in and wave at him. He's doing his thing. How old's Rose, Andy? Uh, a little over three and a half years old. Still a puppy in her eyes. She was awful excited to get here today. Had to run around and say hi to everybody in the shop. What? Come here. You gonna sing for us, Russ? What would be your opinion, Clayton, on like sewing machine leather, cotton or poly? Uh, poly or nylon. Yeah. Really bonded nylon is, is most of what I've used. I've tried yeah. running some cotton thread through before, but I always have trouble with it fraying. Yeah. I'm not going to say it was the best cotton thread or even the right machine thread for what I was running. Um, Still a poly thread when you hand stitch instead of a linen? Mm, it's usually what I use. Yeah. That's usually what I have available, at least. Yeah. The linens, it's nice. Jessica says that Rose is just feel, filling the silence. Thank yeah. you, Rose. <laughs> she, she thinks it's too quiet. In she always time. needs attention is the reason. All right, so we got a strip of glue, one edge of our strip, and then we're going to go around the outside of it, edge of our bag, stick it down. So is there a and, specific place to start? Uh, I I did center of the back, so you're not going to see it as often. And I'm leaving just a little bit of overlap from your center. I don't think it says that in, okay. the, in the directions. So we're starting a little bit past center in the back. And that's where your closure flap, closure flap is going to mount anyway. So it'll be kind of covered on the back side, correct? Yes. Getting there. Catbird Studio says, kept hearing a dog whine and was telling my dog to stop before I realized. <laughs> <laughs> Angela's got a question here. Speaking of oil tan, how would I know if the side I get is water buffalo or cow? Yes, ignorant question, but if I can't ask here. Uh, okay, so a lot of water buffalo sides. I've noticed are shaped a little bit differently than typical cow sides. Mm -hmm. Some of, if it's a full water buffalo side, it's going to be kind of weird, more irregular shaped, honestly, most yeah. of the time. Or like kind of a rounded. Yeah. Won't have the legs and quite as much of a neck type of area. Right. Um, most cow sides are shaped pretty sim similarly. Um, honestly, I, I'm kind of weird and people laugh at me, but I smell just about all the leather I come into contact with. Because a lot of different leathers have different smells, right? And so I I can usually tell the difference between the way a buffalo side smells and a cow side. You know what Liz does with her leather whenever she gets a new piece of leather to look at? What? Licks it. <laughs> or spits on it to see if it accepts water. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Every time we're doing the live sale there, she's like, if we get a piece of leather that's heavy, well, she's, she'll lick her finger and... <laughs> Stick it on there, yeah, yeah. see if it's finished. Yeah. She's a... A leather licker. She's a strange bird. <laughs> no, I just smell all my leather. Wow. Rose running into the camera. Come here. Come here. 
Lay down. She can hear this door to the outside, and she wants Lay to down. go out it. Lay down. All right. Yeah, she's good. All right, fantastic. So you got that placed all the way around. Place some glue about three quarter inch down from the top edge of the strip all the way around the purse. That Is that before or after I sew it? Um, yeah, now sew along. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now sew along the top edge all the way around the purse. You got me. <laughs> and he's like, I feel like I've done this before. It's been, been a minute. So what are the important things to pay attention to when doing a French rolled edge? Uh, not running off your leather on the back side. That's true. Hmm. So does it matter if you sew from the inside of your bag or the outside? Um, it does not matter on this part because it's getting turned anyways. Okay. We're trying to adjust the machine here so I can shoot it because we're kind of shooting ins inside the bag a little bit. Hang on just a second for me. I got it looking at you, aren't you? I'm just showing you Clayton right now. Just me. Okay. Come here, Rose. Get on camera with me. Come on. Make your way through there. You come over on this side. Did you get something else? Okay. I think we can see that now. What are you eating? <laughs> I don't know. Jessica said yawning on camera, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> Did I yawn? I didn't I yawn. Don't know. It's Friday, guys. Cut me a break. Darcy says we all lick a little leather around here. Yeah. your seam allowance you're running there? Uh, it's about a quarter inch. Okay. You just want to make sure you got a seam allowance far enough in to cover your glue line. Yeah. Make sure you're not going to show any glue in that seam once it's turned. Any of you guys going to Wing of Palooza, or is it just me? No, you didn't invite me, so how am I supposed to go? Let's go, man. Okay, we're going right now? Let's meet me up there, like 1 o'clock tomorrow. We'll all meet up. Right. It's not this afternoon? No. Maybe we should go while they set up and do their test wings. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll come in, I'll take the gimbal over there, and we'll have a big camera so it looks like we're important. There you go. Because you got your button-up shirt on, and you brought your camera. Give me, a, give me a microphone. I'll put your microphone out there, and we'll look important, and they'll let us test wings. Exactly. What's our radio name? We can twitch it. No, we'll ha we have a camera. Our radio we'll name? For our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. you, have you not seen us on uh, on Facebook We're, and, and YouTube? We're a big deal. We post videos on there. Yeah. The Wing Spurts. Check us out next time on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make our own press passes before we go. Oh, there you go. Chad, can you get to busy, work on that? Can you get busy on that? We'll laminate them. Get them laminated. <laughs> Dean said he hoped his leather comes unlicked. No promises. <laughs> no promises. Oh, there we go. We're an influencer. That's what, that's what Charles Abbott said. That, yeah. Absolutely. Content creators. <laughs> How'd that go, Andy? It went all right. All right. You got to go pretty slow on these places where they're real thick because your sewing machine will like to slip a little bit. And jump right over it. So if you were hand stitching it, would you do this any differently? Um... No, I don't think so. Let's go right around it, about a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so this is where it gets a little more interesting. 
Place some glue about three quarter inches down from the top edge of the strip all the way around the purse. Also place glue along the top edge of the zipper gusset. Now pull tightly the, pull tightly the strip up and over the top edge and stick it down to the zipper gusset. Now sew against the now formed rolled edge. Trim off the excess on the inside along the stitch with an X-Acto knife. Be careful not to cut through the cut the excess and the zipper gusset. Lots that of words. That sounds tricky. Yeah, there's a lot of words there. There's a whole paragraph of instruction for like one step. We're gonna fix that with like a a picture or two. Charles says that Andy doesn't sound enthusiastic about French roll edges. Don't mind Andy and his enthusiasm or lack thereof. He's super excited. He doesn't excited. want to scare you with all of his enthusiasm. No. Paul asked, would he be right in thinking that these projects may not be I do. I do. really aimed at hand sewing? I know Stacy does his tote bags and he hand sews all of his. Um, not, I don't know, how much time you got on your hands? <laughs> uh, with as many rolled edges as this has, um, no, it, it, would, it would take a while to hand stitch for sure. That's not to say some people don't do it. We've definitely had plenty of people send in projects that you wouldn't believe how much hand stitching they did, and they get pretty fast at it. Of course, with a lot of these uh, these uh, turned out seams and stuff, you don't have to be quite as careful uh, to make your hand stitch real pretty since the seams are getting going to be inside the bag anyhow. But... As far as instructions go on the, a lot of these uh, like purse patterns, a lot of it is written to be hand or machine stitched and not hand stitched. If you got enough time, you can hand sew anything. Absolutely. Rose, Rose, come here. Come on, Rose. We're getting there, man. He's going as fast as he can. Maybe if I block off the door, she'll quit whining at it. Just keep petting her. Yeah, baby. We're falling down on the ground. That's the spot. Right there. Oh, you know what I watched last night, Tony? I have no idea. Top Gun? No. Don't not Top Gun? Would have been a great choice. Where the Red Fern Grows. Where the Red Fern Grows. Isn't there a golden retriever on there? No, it's a couple of Redbone Coonhounds. Oh, yeah, that's right. So sad. I watched it with my nine-year-old boy. He loved it right up until the end, and then he blamed me for putting on such a sad movie. <laughs> All right, son, we're going to end the movie right here. Well, we're <laughs> yeah. not going to finish it. You don't want to watch the end. <laughs> Michael says he took almost 100 hours to hand stitch the duffel bag one. One handed. Nice. Wait, did you say one handed? One handed, yeah. Wow. Kudos to Michael. Yeah. That's a feat. Yeah. Where's he going, Rose? Investigate. That's amazing. Charles said, kind of like Old Yeller. Kind of like Old Yeller, yeah. Super great movie right up to the end. And it just goes right downhill. Ugh. I mean, a goose dies in Top Gun, not a dog. <laughs> Still pretty I sad. I seen Top Gun yet. <laughs> oh, sorry, I ruined part of the movie for you. <laughs> Oh, that's sad dog movies will definitely get to me a lot more than anything else. What'd you do? Oh, party fell. Two 
feet in one hand? Yeah. And he said that was quite a feat. Quite a feat. So he said two feet, just one. No feet involved in the fish. I presume that. Maybe, maybe not. All right, so andy has got his adhesive spread on the back side of his uh, uh, strip that we sewed onto the exterior top edge of the bag, and an adhesive spread on the inside zipper gusset, not too far down. And so he's going to work on rolling that strip up, make sure it's tied up against the stitch, and then fold it down, and hopefully it'll stick so we can stitch around it. I blocked this door off and you can't wind up, so now you're winding at the other door. Oh, okay. I, Michael says I have to use my two feet to hand sew since I'm using one hand, but none of my customers want to know that feet touch their product. So <laughs> just lit, he just lists one hand sewn. One hand sewn. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, though. Yeah, that's pretty great. I'll have to try that sometime. Sounds like a challenge. Oh, yeah. Clayton. I'm sorry, man. It's Friday. I'm just... I'm ready. I'm ready for the weekend. Didn't quite get enough glue on there. Like, looks like you're ready for a nap. Yeah, I am. I turned a year older last week. It's really hit me. This is going to be tough on you. All right. Let's see where we're going with this. And we got, I see we got our shoulder strap pieces here. Yep. We have a, another set of tabs to go with it. Uh, in, somewhere. Thanks. I feel like we're missing some pieces. Might be missing some pieces. All right, well, I'll go check those out, see if I can find them over there. Just keep chatting up these fine folks. What are you looking for? A uh, couple of the tabs that go on the ends of the shoulder strap. These pieces. Donnie John's Clayton said a rawhide box. That would be cool. Yeah. It'd be kind of challenging to make a, a pretty like, make a box that with a lid that would fit decently because that rawhide shrinks so unpredictably. Well, maybe you make the maybe you make like a, a bottom that's made out of wood and then wrap your rawhide around it and then after it dries out, make you a leather lid for it. That could work. Yeah, maybe so. All right, well, let me go grab you some extra leather and I'll cut some tabs for you. Uh, if you want to leave or get an exacto as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You could leave her with Melissa if you want to. Go on, go, Rose. We say bye, Rose. to the stream visited your amazing store yesterday she came back I think after five o'clock 
I was the only one left in the studio, so she probably got more of a conversation than they were hoping for. I'm pretty good at talking. Yeah, I'm not very good at talking. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> We were just talking about Canada this morning. Speaking of Jenny. Well, she did a number on that round to it. She did that. Yeah, I don't know what happened to those tabs. You know, we totally would have been more prepared for this if somebody would have reminded us we had a video. Uh, like I mean, three minutes before. Much. You talked about it last, or uh, you talked about it's it like on Wednesday. Two days ago. Oh my goodness. You did. You gave me two, three minutes, something like that. We got, got a together. character trying to peek in the window over there. Yeah, he's just shaking his head. Why is he shaking his head? I don't know. That's really confidence inspiring. I was going to go move the camera, but he saw me move my chair, so he. He <laughs> Andy, how long have you been leather crafting, or where did you? How did you get to SLC? Um, before this, I was a leather craftsman down at Silver Dollar City in Branson, Ooh. and uh, loved doing that down there. And just got to looking around to see if there was any thing similar or closer. And I knew all these guys were up here, and. One thing led to another. Right, we were his vendor for a long time, right? We sold a bunch of wallet interiors and leather to you guys, I think. Yep. Yeah. Here we are, all the way from Steal Your Dollar City. <laughs> I keep trying to get him to dress up, you know, in his uniform. He had to wear down there. Oh, I think they have to give that back once they leave. Period dress. I wear my own uniform. I couldn't stand wearing polyester all day. <laughs> so we're, you're hearing noises. We're over here taking the uh, washers off so we can take the table off. Somebody did mention last time um, of taking these wing nuts and putting a different apparatus on there to attach their table that made it easier. Thumb, uh, those big thumb screws screwed on there. Yeah. Just make it easier, a little quicker to take on and off. Well, and a little easier to grip. Right. Those wing nuts. If you don't have dexterity and pitching Oops. from hand sewing everything, you got yourself a sewing machine, then you got to take wing nuts on and off. You have her, a happy birthday, a happy birthday message, Clayton. A happy birthday message, huh? To a fellow Scorpio. Oh, nice. Mine's next. This week. guy gets it. Mine, mine's next week. A happy birthday, Joni. Yeah. Thanks, Clayton. Do anything special for it? Uh, probably sleeping. Taking a nap. Playing with the girls. Probably that. They keep asking what I want for my birthday. Don't give away your age. At some point, birthdays are just a day that goes by. It's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, well, wait till you get older, Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> Dean said wing nuts are Air Force people. True that. <laughs> Vanessa retired U.S. Air Force in 96. Nice.
is looking real nice, Andy. Quality French rolled edge. Mm. Vanessa said she's getting some more harness leather for her birthday. Thanks. I gotta say, I didn't get any leather for my birthday this year. Didn't didn't get much for my birthday. Oh, I got like a little foot massager thing. You put it on the ground and rub your feet over. That's probably like one of the best things I got That's this what year. You got, foot massager. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Remember and then I got some get, outdoor get solar lights. <laughs> so funny when like you talk about you kitchen utensils. Like, oh, I'm super happy, but man, we got this sweet Instapot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Because I am getting old. Right? Yeah, you're talking about your foot massager was the coolest thing you've gotten lately. It was, man. <laughs> it's fantastic. I am. <laughs> Alright, so while he's sewing that, I'm going to go ahead and help him out. I'm going to start gluing together the shoulder strap. No big deal. Just sticking two pieces of leather together to make a two-ply strap. Save us a little bit of time so maybe I can eat lunch before 12.30. What time is it, Tony? Uh, 12.30. Okay. No, it's just 12. 12.04. Yeah, we're getting close. Wrapping up this bag. We, really, we're, we're through the hardest parts for sure. I'm just here on out, it's... finish this on the last stream. You know, we could have done it. We would have jumped rather, in and tag teamed it, you know. Rather ambitious, I might say. What was it? Didn't we do the duffel bag in one shot? I use it. No. Oh, now you're waiting on me, huh? Maybe. So, what'd you guys make at Silver Dollar City? Uh, a lot of belts. Yeah. A lot of belts. You pretty good at stamping names on belts? Uh, I got pretty good yeah. there there towards the end. That, I, I did a lot of, uh, like, purses, backpacks, journals, key fobs, a lot of hair barrettes. What was your favorite leather to work with? Uh, my favorite is... Uh, there's a leather that we, we could get down there. It was a Crazy Horse Water Buffalo. It was a four or five ounce. Nice. It had a lot of uh, texture and color to it. Yeah, a lot of good character. Not like our water buffalo we have here? It, it's similar to our Crazy Horse, but the temper uh, on it was a little bit different, and it wasn't... Uh, eight nine ounce like I think ours is. Yeah. I mean we got a splitter. Yeah. I just can't add temper to it. Well I guess I could put on the floor and stomp on it. So all right, well there's your exacto knife. You wanna do the honors on trimming that edge? I don't know, you got a steady hand. <laughs> <laughs> gotta let you, you do, do it on live work. camera. <laughs> Alright, give me that exacto knife. I'll try it. So this is a yeah, little bit of a surgical process. Come over to the middle there. Alright. Don't watch too close. My head's probably going to be in the way for most of it. So the key to trimming off uh, your excess right here is making sure you get a good sharp blade, which I think hopefully we do, and um, and just going slow and being real careful. You want to cut through your binding strip in your first pass, and that keeps you from getting a real ragged edge. But uh, you also don't want to cut so deep that you're going through to your zipper gusset. started here. Oh, got a little bit of a curve in it there. Are you pulling your pulling it away as you're cutting too? I yeah, I am. I'm kind of keeping a little bit of tension on it, pulling it upwards as I'm cutting. And like I said, you want to be careful that you that you cut all the way through the piece. Because uh, if you don't and you're just tearing that piece off, you're going to end up with a real ragged edge, which I'm probably going to have some here because this thing isn't the sharpest, but I'm going to do the best that I can. And you can tell if you if you do cut too deep, you're going to end up into your zipper gusset, which is going to be a bad deal. 
this was Venetian wine and latte. Wine and latte. Don't mix them together in your cup, just in your leather work. Yeah, I don't think a wine latte would serve anybody well. I, I don't know. There's somebody out there that would like it. At <laughs> some point, I guess you could. Risky cutting there. Yeah, it is. Vanessa's holding her breath. Oh, very true. Clayton, have you ever tried to use the trick with the French edger? Um, yeah, I have. Uh, you got to make sure you got it real good and sharp. Um, and it takes a little bit of skill too, but it's a little bit less risky than this, I suppose. So whenever you're doing this, it also helps to keep the blade angled back, and that way you're actually slicing through it a little bit more. You can see I definitely need a little bit sharper of a knife. I should have grabbed a new blade. A little fuzzy. Yeah, it's a little fuzzy. Not the cleanest cut ever. You want to go grab one? Well, we're almost through it. You can come back and if you want to with like some gum trag or tokenol and kind of burnish that inside edge a little bit. Yeah, and you can strop that razor blade. Yeah. Yeah, usually we'll have a a uh, cloth wheel with some jeweler's rouge on it. Sharpen up these razor blades. Starting to get kind of ugly. I have some token all I have some token all here, so. I guess if you if you're doing it like that, Clayton, could you just blunt the end of your blade? Kind of round it off. Yeah. Well. And just have that one for doing that type of thing. You could. I mean, really, you're using your razor blade all the way down to the tip, ideally, to cut through it and not any deeper. Charles said we can just blame the other ugly parts on me. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah, you can see it got a little bit fuzzy on me in a couple parts, and so I just need to make sure and get a new blade next time, or strop that one that we have. But we can use, yeah, we can try a little bit of tokenol and see if we can get some of that out of there. Uh, there's some clean cameras behind you. Or, All done. I was trying to get get it before you got there, but fail. Yeah, you can see that token all really just cleans it right up. So even if you do get a fuzzy edge, it it really lays it back down, makes it look nice. Yeah? Yeah. I thought you used the vintage gel. <laughs> with Phoebings. Color it back out. Looks like you used a little on yours for the last time I've seen you. No. Looking a little darker today. I just had it cut recently. That's why it looks darker. <laughs> and it's still got plenty of gray. That's what having four kids will do to you. Maybe.
All right, so what are you doing over there, Andy? Uh, off camera, I just sewed along the edges of our strap here to get them ready for uh, attaching to the bag. Dean says you have a fine haircut, Clayton. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Carol said I knew you said y'all sold shoe polish for some reason. <laughs> Got all my all my mistake covered up here, but good news is, is I didn't cut through the zipper gusset, so that's that's the real goal. So CB Clayton says I have to say that I have my doubts about the two colors, but that bag came out great. Thanks for helping me expand on colors. Awesome, man! You yeah. know what? I was kind of in the same boat. <laughs> you were also in the same. I was a little unsure, but you know what? Wine and lattes. They go together. I say, if you wanted to go sell this and you put a tag on it of Harry Potter or Gryffindor on there, add you about fifty bucks to the bag. That's right. <laughs> Attaching our shoulder strap. We have to get our flap on there too, still too, don't we? Oh yeah, I should probably sew that on before I do this. Which is the next step? It's the flap. Okay. I got you. All right. So how does our flap attach on there? I don't know what other direction. No, okay, say. all right. All right. <laughs> oh, you've done this before, man. All right. Uh, put a strip of quarter inch spacing tape on the back back end of the flap. Make sure to put it on the same side as the magnetic clasp. Now place the magnetic clasp and flap onto the bag. Fold the back end of the flap up and over the back side of the bag and stick it down, making sure it's not too tight to the purse. Once the flap is stuck in place, sew it on. So attach it to the magnet? Yep. So we're going to. Have our basing tape on the back, put our magnetic clasp together, and fold find it over the back. Find a good pull. That's a lot of words to say. Use common sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've never made one before. I can't see what you're doing, Andy. Or if you're not sitting off camera commentating, it might not be so obvious. I'm over here running cameras. Oh, okay. And reading chats. Chad, did you get a new lava lamp? Still the same one? Same one. Same one, same one that we have from Wednesday. Wednesday. You might need to get another one. It changes like all the time. Yeah. Flow and stuff. Yeah. Oh, Andrea's I guess that's, that's probably what it is, just yeah. different lava flow. <laughs> Andrea is about to place her order for some wine Venetian. That's a good color. It is. And it goes with a lot of the a lot of different neutrals. That does look like a Harry Potter bag, now that I mentioned it. It was not um, on purpose. Vanessa said, put an elm wand in there. <laughs> Get your wand set in there. What's that? What's the, uh, what's the little thing that Dumbledore gives to uh, Ron after he dies? The deluminator? Yes. The little switch thing? Oh. That take a putter outer? Yeah. I think you're a little more Harry Potter nerd than I am. Yeah, well, I mean, let's talk about Star Wars for a little bit. I know, I'm a little more on that. My daughter, uh, she's 13, and so she's been into Harry Potter lately, so we listened to the we listened to the books, read through the books, watched the movies more than once. Yep. 
My wife is going through reading the books to our kids. I think they're on number four. Yeah, they're reading through number four. Well, did you watch the teaser the other day? Mm -mm. There's a new one coming out. Well, we've talked about that because it was around the t <clears throat> around like the the distance and time that his kids should be. All the kids should be closer to being in wizard school, or at least the younger ones. All right, so Lil Fear says, I'm working on a bifold credit card wallet out of the shark piece I ordered from the online shopping. Not sure it's going to work out. Might be too thick. What do you think? Um, it could be. The one way to thin down your shark, if you've got a, a sander, you can sand sand it off from the back and try to thin it down a little bit. Um, it can be a little bit risky if you've got a really textured piece of shark. You don't want to sand through uh, and create any holes in it. But that might be one way you can get it thinned down a little bit. Um, we've tried to split shark before on our splitting machines and typically we don't we don't really split exotics for customers because there is so much risk that it's going to get eaten up or just like with any piece of leather going through a splitter. Uh, but sometimes it works if it's like a, like I said if it's not too textured. But yeah, I mean that's a problem with wallets. A lot of times they turn out too thick if you're doing a full leather construction. You kind of got to pay attention while you're doing that to make sure you don't sew down your zipper. Yep. There might be some choice words said. Right. You get to this point, you sew through your zipper gusset, you might be a little upset. So what's the next purse you're going to do on live TV here, Andy? I don't know. I'll have to go through our old patterns and uh, see which looks which ones look fun? Yeah. Getting close. Yeah, we might have to laser engrave the Gryffindor. Well, somebody else said Dungeon of the Dragon, but you could do that on there too. Yeah, that's true. A little D and D. I've never played it, so I can not comment any further than that. I haven't either. Never, I haven't gotten into D&D, &D, at least not yet. Vanessa would like to make a double zipper wallet slash organizer. So maybe like a zipper inside and then... Sounds like an accordion gusseted nightmare. That's a good project. I've done a couple of those, but... Again, if you're not using a leather that's very, very thin, depending on how many organized, how many pockets you want in your organizer and how many gussets, it can get pretty thick, pretty fast. Ooh, goodness. Do a Slytherin purse next. Slytherin messenger bag. Oh, there you go. We have some, don't we have some green Venetian out there? Oh yeah, Venetian has a pretty good uh, color choice. Great for all the Harry Potter bags you could ever want. <laughs> they shouldn't market that. So is there anything important you got to pay attention to when sticking these tabs on there? Um, not really s sticking them together, uh, other than just trying to get everything even from side to side. Yeah, a lot of times when I'm, I'm doubling over a tab like that and, you know, putting it onto a strap, whether it's a turn back on a belt, I've done that way, um, or something like this on a purse strap, I always try to bring the, uh, the bottom layer whatever's going to be on the bottom when I'm stitching it a little bit further out than the top one. And that way I make sure I'm not going to miss it when I stitch it on the machine. Can you come over just a little bit so I can see what you're doing? Thank you. Uh, this is not necessary, but it helps me to uh, have a little bit straighter stitch line when I come across. Not left-handed, are you? Nope, not left-handed. I think it's good practice.
do all your little... I always mark my stitch lines on any, any projects that I want to turn out very well. You know, any stitches that are going to be seen from the outside. I'll always mark them to make sure they're nice and straight. You say it. Minimalist wallet. They have shark on the outside of it. You got one? I think so. And that one? And an overhead? Yeah. You hold that up over there a little further? What's all that cash? That's your birthday money? Yep. So it's a, it's got three different pockets. Man, I'm terrible. It's that's the toughest camera to like figure out. You feel like you're doing one thing and then it starts doing the other. Yeah. So it's got it's five pockets total, but three pieces of leather stacked and folded together. And when they're laying out flat, you stitch up the center, fold it in half, and then it's actually got a small welt across this bottom to take up some of the thickness. Yeah, shark on the outside, and then I use the Herman Oak bridle for the interior pockets. I have the same one. Do you? Weird. I bet I made that one too. I'm pretty sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you make all the nine gen stuff? Uh, most of it. Pretty sure Andrew's got the shave roll that I made hanging on his wall in his in ecom over there by his desk. What are you making? Do we have a pattern for that? Uh, yeah, I've still got the pattern for it. We should make it into a, a, a pattern we sell. Oh boy, yeah. It was, a, it was pretty neat looking. That was my design. So, yeah, might as well. It's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say steampunk, what's the, what'd you call it? I don't know, you're in marketing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what style to call it anymore. Nine Gents was a, um, you know, upper end men's fashion accessories. Yeah, what do they call upper end? It men's? did feel really steampunk though. It's kind of steampunk, I, I guess. So. It could be made more steampunk. Mm -hmm. Kind of like diesel brand. Maybe. They're yeah. Not quite like Fortune. everybody else. Looks like something Fossil could have made. I don't know. Dean was bougie. Bougie. Char Charles says bougie. Yeah, that's Dean it. Dean asked, he said, who's on the marketing team? The bougie shade roll. Who's on the marketing team? Yeah. Well, it's not exactly clear. I leave a few out. I don't know, man. Hey, did you see that email that I sent last night, Clayton? About the catalog being digital now on our website. Oh, so you yeah, you did. You sent an email at like 5.50. I was working late. Wow. wow. Proud of you. Yeah, I did see that. That's pretty exciting. And all the items are going to be hyperlinks? And yeah. you've got them all done already? Stacy's working on them. Not today. And everything's not. correctly linked? That's the hope. <laughs> That's the hope that it will be correctly linked. It takes a long time. I did the... Oh, I bet. The leather machine guide with, that has all the sewing machines and tips and tricks in there, I did it with that, and it took a while. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not, and that's not, not the catalog. Like, there's only 40-something pages. The catalog's like 300-and-something pages. Yeah, that would be pretty impressive if you guys pull that off, but that, that's super exciting. That would be very handy. Yeah. And that would be awesome. So, But you can view them now. They're on the, web, they're on the website now. On nice. the home page. You guys, like... Dropped any lines on when the print's coming? Uh, well, December. We're in line. We're waiting for the print shop to get to our project. December. December. Yeah, that's what we're telling everybody. It'll be in the newsletter on Sunday, too. So. Wow. Well, looks exclusive for you guys there watching today. Next next week, um, starting 21 crazy days. Sales for 21 days. 21 days. How long does that last? 
21 days. Yeah, thereabouts. <laughs> yeah, it's going to start on the 10th and it's going to last for 21 days, which should end on November the 30th. At 11.59, November 30th? Yeah. Day 21 should be. About the end of it. Nice, man. You guys got all your items lined up and everything? Um, I mean, it's about as it's about as lined up as you were for this video this morning. Cool. <laughs> it's a little better than that. Cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the big finale here. You gonna try it on? Yeah, you, make it, you gotta wear it. Uh, Clayton will get to try it on. Oh, he made it for me. Yep. Those, those colors are really sharp. Yeah. I'm proud of us. We put our heads together and really picked out a good color scheme. Check that out. So this is the Midtown Bucket Bag. It's got a pretty... It doesn't say it's a medium-sized purse. It's not, definitely not your large bag lady style by any means. Uh, but it's got a good amount of volume to it, and it is. This pattern is priming for a drop-in liner, let me tell you. It would be super easy. You'd stitch it in uh, just whenever you stitch your zipper gusset on uh, with your French, the beginning of your French rolled edge. You'd be able to stitch a, a small drop-in liner in there pretty easily. You could also do uh, pipe rolled edges on it. Yeah, this bag would look great with piping uh, going around the, the seams here. Uh, you've got these two exterior gusset pockets, one exterior pocket on the back. It's pretty sweet. If you still carry a, a Motorola Razor phone, a little Ro Razor phone, you can put yep. it in the side pocket. If right. not, your phone will not fit. Probably not in the side, no. <laughs> not a phone thing. I don't, I don't even like know a, if a some, Razor. Maybe an old Nokia. Oh, those little... A brick phone. Brick, yeah. The brick phone. Yeah. yeah. You can stick some pins or something in there. But yeah, pretty neat. Oh. Looks good. Yep. Wear it with some, some gray. You really know? really matches goes your gray. eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really brings the color out in your eyes, Clayton. Awesome, man. Well, anything else we want to say about it? You got the all the items in the item numbers in the description. Midtown bucket bag. We've got your pattern. We are going to be looking at redoing the instructions, the written instructions. But with this video, who needs them, <laughs> right? You can take what we've been an hour and a half on the first one, an hour and a half, three hours, and you can put together put together a bag. Yep, absolutely. What's the maroon leather? Uh, this is the wine Venetian. Wine Venetian, and then latte. And latte Venetian. So it's our, our Venetian bag sides. We do get these in hides. So if you really want a whole bunch of it, you could get it in, uh, you know, probably 40 square your, foot hide if you wanted to. If you want your purse to match your couch? Absolutely. You could buy a whole hide. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, All guys. Right, nothing else. Next week, uh, Denny's doing the bowling ball bag. Nope. Nope. We're going to. Yep. Bowling ball bag. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. We got some green Herman Oak. I saw that. Drum dang. I don't know what else you would make with that but a bowling ball bag. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in with us. Thanks for watching. Everybody give Andy a big hand for his debut project on camera. <laughs> and then um, maybe when he comes back, we'll bring Rose as well. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. See ya.